Enzymes, part three, making connections. You already know that enzymes are biological catalysts and these biological catalysts are protein in nature. Enzymes work by lowering the amount of activation energy required to get a reaction going. And without enzymes, those biochemical reactions that take place within all living organisms simply would not happen fast enough to sustain life, to keep life going. Let's try and make some links or connections with possible exam questions. Let's begin by asking where exactly are enzymes made? Enzymes are made by these organelles known as ribosomes. Ribosomes can be found in the cytoplasm of plant and animal cells. These are eukaryotic cells. But you should also be aware that those prokaryotic cells, for example, bacterial cells, also contain ribosomes. They're just different ones to those found in the eukaryotic cells. Ribosomes are not only found in the cytoplasm of cells, but also within particular types of organelles, such as chloroplasts and mitochondria. But why? If ribosomes are present within these organelles, well then enzymes must be needed. There must be many enzyme-controlled reactions taking place within these organelles. If you were to look inside a mitochondrion, you would see many ribosomes. You would see ribosomes in the matrix of the mitochondrion and also embedded in the membranes of those cristae, those infoldings. Well, there must be a reason for all those ribosomes. There is. Aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria and this process involves so many enzymes. Those ribosomes must be present in order to produce proteins, particular types of proteins such as enzymes, and one important enzyme is ATP synthase. So now let's discuss the chloroplast, those organelles found in plant cells. The liquid part of the chloroplast is known as the stroma and it contains many ribosomes. And we remember that the dark stage reactions of photosynthesis take place within the stroma of the chloroplast and it is the dark stage reactions of photosynthesis that are enzyme controlled. So I hope you're making the connection that all factors that affect enzyme activity such as pH and temperature will also affect these processes we've just discussed aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. This links in nicely with homeostasis, which means maintaining constant internal conditions, and two examples of which would be maintaining pH and maintaining temperature. And the reason you want to maintain them is to ensure that those enzyme-controlled reactions can proceed as they should. Not forgetting all of the other factors which will affect enzyme activity. So we had temperature, pH, substrate concentration, enzyme concentration and the presence of inhibitors. Make sure that you can discuss what's happening in the enzyme temperature graph and the enzyme pH graph. Make sure you can draw them and label them. Human enzymes work best at normal body temperature and this is generally deemed to be 37 degrees Celsius. Normal body temperature can vary depending on many factors and there's a separate video on this just for your information. If we compare this to plants, plant enzymes have an optimal temperature range of anywhere between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. Please be aware as well that many enzymes have very different optimal pHs. Salivary amylase produced in the mouth by the salivary glands, its optimal pH is pH 7. Whereas pepsin, that protease in your stomach, its optimal pH is 2, acidic. Most of those intestinal enzymes have an optimal pH of 7.5, so slightly alkaline. The enzymes found in the intestines are all very different. However, they all seem to work best in a slightly alkaline environment, so their pH, their optimal pH, will be somewhere above 7 but below 9. So here's a list of some of the enzymes which you should know and which you will have encountered on your course. So salivary amylase, pancreatic amylases, pepsin, which is that protease found in the stomach, pancreatic proteases and pancreatic lipases, all found in digestion. You should also have encountered some enzymes in those chapters connected with DNA and genetic engineering. That anabolic enzyme, DNA polymerase, is used in constructing DNA. Ligase was an enzyme that you encountered in the chapter on genetic engineering. The chapter on plant reproduction, in particular seed formation, has many links to enzymes. And if you have not already, you will do an experiment to look at the digestive activity in germinating seeds. Biological washing powders are those detergents which contain enzymes. The enzymes are added to break down stains. And it's important to note that these enzymes will also have optimal temperatures at which they work best and optimal pHs. The Royal Society of Chemistry has a really great website, so I highly recommend you check this out. 
Hopefully this video has helped you make connections with enzymes and your exam papers and the other chapters you've studied during your course. Please always use your textbook, please practice doing past papers and always listen to your teacher's guidance. This video is made using icons from the NAM project. Please note I'm a pro member but I still want to recognise and credit the artists.